Seven-year-old Sonny, a deaf-blind boy from Barry Street Edmonds, will star in a BBC charity appeal with EastEnders' Kelly Bright. The appeal, airing Easter Sunday, highlights Sense's support for children with complex needs. Bright emphasizes Sense's vital work, aiding Sonny's family and others like them. Tune in to BBC One on Easter Sunday. An EastEnders star and a deafblind seven-year-old Suffolk kid will be featured in a BBC charity campaign. An Easter BBC charity appeal featuring a deafblind Barry St. Edmunds kid is scheduled to generate funds for the National Disability Charity, Sense. Sonny, age seven, who resides in Barry Street Edmonds with his parents Julie and Dan, will be featured in the BBC Lifeline appeal showcasing the assistance Sense provides to kids with complex needs and their families. The Easter Sunday campaign, which features three youngsters that Sense sponsors, will be fronted by Strictly Come Dancing star and Eastender Kelly Bright. Sonny, aged seven, resides in Barry Street, Edmonds. I'm honored to be supporting this appeal for Sense, a charity that believes no one should be left out of life, regardless of their disability, Bright stated. Sense was established 70 years ago by two mothers who shared deafblind children. They were dedicated to removing the obstacles preventing kids from interacting with one another and having a positive experience with the outside world. Continuing that mission today, Sense now also supports people living with a range of other complex disabilities. She went on to say, with your help and support, Sense can continue their life-changing work. The host of the show will be Kelly Bright. Sonny's parents characterize him as cheeky, curious and hilarious, having spent the first year of his life in the hospital. Dan and Julie were concerned that their young kid might never be able to communicate. Julie responded, you ready yourself for great milestones, like hearing your child say mama or a dad for the first time. Then, without warning, you are informed, no, that is not going to happen. Staff members at Sense, such as Diane, a senior multisensory impairment practitioner, assisted Julie and Dan in assisting Sonny in learning to communicate through symbols. Sonny during the appeal video shoot with his mother and Sense support worker. The family has since started to put symbols for Sonny in strategic locations around the house. These symbols are photos and words that stand in for items like toys, food, and storybooks, and they allow Sonny to convey himself to his parents. Julie remarked, without sense, our world would have been extremely different. They resemble a large family. The BBC Lifeline Appeal will air on BBC One at 2 p.m. on Easter Sunday and on BBC Two at 12 p.m. on Friday, April 5. Who is the spouse of Phil Mitchell from EastEnders? All the information you require on his five wives. The Hardman from Walford enjoys a good wedding. Phil Mitchell from EastEnders is a man who has a knack for seducing and falling in love with the majority of Walford's attractive women. In addition to his five marriages, the love rat has more engagements than cooked dinners to his credit, not to mention his one-night encounters. In addition to having four children with four different women, Ben, Louise, Raymond, and Albie, the local hard nut is undoubtedly preserving the Mitchell name for future generations. Phil is Lexi Pierce's grandfather as well. Thirty years have passed since Phil first said, I do, to his first wife, Nadia, in a chaotic wedding. But do you remember every wife Phil had? To help us remember all of Phil's memorable moments, we've divided up his marital timeline. 1. Borovac, Nadia In July 1993, Nadia Borovac, a Romanian refugee, became Phil's first wife. Their union was primarily motivated by her desire to remain in England. Naturally, Phil and Nadia's happiness after being married was short-lived since the thug believed he had done a good act for a pleasant woman he had met in a bar and that was that. However, she went back to Walford when he was happily seeing Kathy Beale, and she convinced him to move in with her in order to make their marriage appear more authentic to the home office. Later that year, after she followed Phil and eventually bedded him, Grant Mitchell ran her out of Walford by threatening her. Months later, when Phil desired to wed Kathy, he had to find Nadia, who had blackmailed him for £1,000, which he eventually paid. Since then, she hasn't been on film. 2. Beale Kathy In 1995, two years after his mocking marriage to Nadia, Phil was getting married again, this time to Kathy Beale. In March 1996, the well-known couple welcomed their son Ben Mitchell into the world. But once Phil's marriage to Lorna Cartwright collapsed due to their affair, he turned to booze. In 2000, Kathy made the decision to go to South Africa with her new spouse, Gavin Sullivan. 
Even though Phil and Kathy didn't get along, they were still friendly enough for Phil to support Kathy when she pretended to be dead. In 2015, Kathy made her way back to Walford, the two former lovers are close friends to this day. 3. The Kate Morton After first seeing Jamie Mitchell in the hospital while he was dying from a car accident, Phil wed Kate in 2003. The future bride gave her name as Kate Tyler at first, but it turned out that Jill Hapenny's character, Kate Morton, was actually her true name. It was eventually discovered that, despite D.I. Marsden's initial belief that Kate was a nail technician, she was actually an undercover police officer assigned to capture the Mitchells and incriminate Phil. But Kate had to leave her work when she started to fall in love with Phil. After Phil proposed to Kate, the two got married. However, a long story short, Phil was falsely accused of assault and sent in jail when his ex-girlfriend Lisa Fowler showed up on their wedding day demanding her daughter Louise back. In 2005, Kate filed for divorce and relocated to Brighton. 4. Theodora Watts Good Old Phil and Sharon, a pair on the rise who would eventually get married, or not. Given the length of their decades-long, intermittent relationship, Sharon is undoubtedly Phil's one true love. Ever since Sharon slept with him behind the backs of his brother and her ex-husband Grant, they have been leaping into each other's beds. September 2014 became their official wedding month. However, they didn't last because of Sharon's romance with Keanu Taylor, which caused their marriage to fail. When Phil learned that his pregnant wife Sharon was expecting Keanu's child, he was devastated. The divorce between Phil and Sharon was officially announced in 2020, but in an ironic turn of events, on Christmas Day 2023, just hours before Keanu was killed, it was discovered that young Albie Watts was actually Phil's son. Shall Sharon and Phil ever reunite with one another? 5. The Slater Cat Anyone would think Phil was barred from marriage for life after the heartbreak of Sharon's treachery, but he walked down the aisle again in 2023, this time with Cat Slater as his bride. Unexpected lovers Phil and Cat married in September 2023 to officially declare their love for one another. However, just before their wedding, Phil had an affair with Emma Harding, believing that Cat was still in love with her former husband Alfie Moon, which caused him to become enraged. Until his sister Sam Mitchell revealed his infidelity to everyone in the Queen Vic in January 2024, Phil was able to marry Cat while keeping his infidelity a secret. The gangster is now single, and this signified the end of Cat and Phil's marriage. In order to close the loophole that prevents families of women murdered in their homes from receiving the justice they deserve, former Eastender Brooke Kinsella has demanded that the government impose harsher terms for husband killers. In order to provide the families of murdered women with the justice they deserve, former Eastender Brooke Kinsella has requested that the government impose harsher terms on husband killers. After her brother was fatally stabbed in Islington, North London, in June 2008 while he was out celebrating the end of his GCSE examinations, Kinsella, 40, spearheaded a successful campaign to impose harsher jail sentences for knife killers. She is now pressuring the government to address a legal gap that is allegedly preventing the relatives of hundreds of women who are killed in their homes each year from receiving justice. One of the worst, remaining open sores in the legal system, according to experts, is the 10-year gap in murder sentences, which the administration is debating eliminating. Currently, the starting point for punishment for a murderer using a knife, taken to the scene with intent, is 25 years. However, domestic killers who used a weapon that was already stored at the site were exempt from the harsher punishments of Ben's law, which was enacted following the killing of Kinsella's 16-year-old brother Ben. For these circumstances, the beginning point stayed at 15 years. Three heartbroken mothers, Carol Gould, Julie Devy Waterhouse, and Elaine Newborough, whose children were fatally murdered by individuals who subsequently received shorter terms than their families had wanted, started the Killed Women campaign, to which Kinsella has contributed. The goal of Ben's law was always to strengthen sentences for knife crime, Kinsella stated to the Times. However, a significant gap has surfaced. The existing legislation does not address the fact that the majority of women who are killed with knives do it at home. If the offender takes a knife with the express intent to commit murder, their starting penalty is 25 years, in these circumstances, the offender faces a far lesser 15 years. After receiving 5,200 replies to a public consultation, the Ministry of Justice is currently debating how to respond. We have already taken decisive action to ensure domestic killers are locked up for longer, the Ministry of Justice stated. 
We are currently analyzing responses to our consultation on starting points for murders committed with a weapon already at the scene. New statutory aggravating factors for overkill, killing at the end of a relationship, and controlling or coercive behavior have also been introduced. Please subscribe our channel.